out of this image rather than shaping our personality. And sometimes we have this persona or this image, and regardless, you, you don't have to like it. I'm going to thrust it upon you anyway. Mm. Hold on. I'm going to go back to uh, that, that one of those verses we've been talking about quite a bit because it, this also plays well. On some have compassion, <laughs> making a distinction. On others, win them with fear, pulling them from the fire. Amen? Sometimes we need to understand, we just need to get honest with ourselves and with others. Because, you know, here's the deal. When we're trying to develop this persona rather than our character, <laughs> rather than our personalities, when we do this, we're like children who wears a costume and make believes that they're somebody else. I mean, I, I can imagine myself right now. I mean, just, just picture me in, in, a, in, a, in, in, in Speedo with a red cape. Oh, Lord. oh my gosh. Okay, let's Please, not. I gotta go to bed tonight. <laughs> it's terrifying. But my be simple. I, I'd like to be Superman or something. Why? I mean, but in, in all honesty, I don't know that I'm gonna really ever be there. <coughs> but the difference is that the child, listen to the, here's the thing. The, what listen to me, gentlemen and ladies. The difference between you and children is children most of the time. They know that it's playing make-believe. It's playing dress-up. It's not really who they are. They're, this, guy, this little boy's not an Indian, and that little boy's not a, not a cowboy. Uh, and, I mean, do you hear what I'm telling you? And the other one's not Superman. And they're not Superman. That's right. <laughs> so the difference is a child knows the difference between the real world and the fantasy world. Too many of us adults, we're living in a fantasy world. And can I tell you what that does for your, your testimony? So the song that we sang, he's too good not to believe. The problem is, is that you make him out to be something he's not. When you're not becoming what he wants you to be. Because you're making yourself out to be something that you're not. The Bible talks about that, the, you know, well, we talked a few weeks ago, or maybe it was last week, about pride comes before the fall. Oh. We talked about humility, did we not? Yeah. And so the one reason that a Christ that Christ centered friendships are important is everybody needs at least one friend who has full access to pretty much every part of your life. Amen. I mean, every part of your heart. They can, and, and maybe you know some people like that. Maybe, and maybe you're fortunate enough to have more than one person, but they can look at you and they can see beyond the facade. They can see beyond. They can see beyond your makeup and your hairdo and your clothes. They can see beyond whatever expressions on your face. And thank God when they love you anyway. Amen. You know, we need a, here's what we need. We need a friend. We need friends who can be brutally honest with us and point out when we're hiding behind a facade. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, you got to smile. Which face are you wearing? Mm -hmm. Which, which face? And some people, they don't, they, they're hiding anymore. They, they've given up and they've gone into darkness. Amen? You see, as Christians, we're supposed to be new creatures. Is that not right? Yeah, really and we're true. supposed to not be like the rest of this world. But we're supposed to be transformed by what? The renewing, the renewing of our mind. The renewing of our mind. Amen? And the only way our mind can be renewed daily is having a having that regular time, that regular talk with Jesus, and that close personal friend who is also someone who is close to Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Colossians chapter three. Listen to this. In chapter three, uh, let me just share a couple of verses. Colossians chapter three, and I'm just going to jump down here. Okay, we're going to jump down to verse 8. Verse 8, chapter 3, verse 8, Colossians. It says, But now you yourselves are to put off these things. Here it comes. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not, what does it say? Lie, Lie one to another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who, who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Hello. A new knowledge in Christ. In other words, you sought him. Did you find it? Did you find him? I know he wasn't lost. 
But did, did you hear what I'm telling you? You sought him, you found him, you're breaking up that fallow ground, ground, ground and now you're looking for his righteousness to reign, reign upon you. Somebody say amen. Amen. So go on here. It says, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all in, in all. all. Amen. So the, the thing we have to look at, though, is that we have to put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. You see, what's happening here is as you're seeking him, and that's what this, honestly, that's what this devotion we're doing is all about. That's why you come to church. That's why you pray. That's why you read your Bible, because you want to stay in constant connection with God. You know, I, there's a song we used to sing. Uh, oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to be for, right? Forever. When did forever begin? In the beginning. In the beginning. Wait, forever is forever. It's eternal. The idea here, did you know that you can seek him now? The Bible says seek him while he can be found. Did you know there's going to come a time, there's going to come a time where he can't be found anymore? Did you hear that? But that is not the time now. Now is, now is the day of salvation. Now it's high time that we seek the Lord. Somebody say amen. Amen. So go with me to Ephesians chapter 4. We talked about putting off some things. In Ephesians chapter 4. Let's see. We're going to jump down to... Twenty-two, yes. Here we're going to put off some things. Okay, we're going to put we're going to put away some things that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Verse twenty-five. Brother Harold, read that big and loud. Therefore, putting away lying. What, what are we putting away? Lying. Okay, go ahead. But each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no, more, no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Amen. Reward for honesty. Now this is not, this is related to, but I guess we, here's the deal. If you came to Jesus just with the intent, or somebody said you need to come to Jesus or you're going to go to hell. Did you know it's true? Yeah. Okay. But if that's the reason you're coming to him and you keep coming to him, you're coming for the wrong reason. Yes. Did you hear what I'm telling you? Yeah. There's a reason that you want to see him and look upon his face. It's because you love him. Mm -hmm. And so because you love him, you pursue after him. But what we're talking about tonight is the fact that there are other rewards. And these rewards, we were, many of the rewards we'll receive in this life. Amen. There will be rewards we receive in the next life. The greatest rewards of all. But one of the things that happens, and I still believe this wholeheartedly, when I stand before the Lord, I know what the Bible says. You know, I have to give an account. I have to give an account for myself. I have to give an account for anybody who God had given to me, who put me under or put them under me as a, a pastor, as a spiritual leader. And, and did you know that we are accountable one to another? Amen. Okay? How is that going to go? And the Bible says, of course, for those who are in, leaders in the church, that when, the per, when those leaders in the church go before the Lord, you, you need to be in a place where they can give a, an account without tears, unless they're tears of joy. Yes. You know, Paul talked about a group of people... And uh, he, he, he came and he commended them. He says, you know what? 
this is fantastic. You know, I, I hear what, what great works that you're doing. And, and my